Hey everybody, happy Sabbath. Question for you, does anybody here like to receive gifts? Hmm, I know I do. I like to get gifts and I like to give gifts. This gift is very special. In fact, it builds strong bones and muscles. It also gives you good, healthy blood, so you're less likely to get sick. It's a wonderful mood booster. In fact, it can help you keep from feeling sad and depressed. It can help you do better in school and to look and feel your best. It can even help you sleep better. It can help keep you from getting diseases such as cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and osteoporosis. In fact, it will add years to your life. It can also help you have a better understanding of the things of God. Would you like a gift like that? Who can guess what it's called? Yes, this wonderful gift is exercise. I have several things to share with you in this presentation. It's called Get Moving. Long ago, everyone got lots of exercise. People walked long distances. They worked hard all day long. But today, things have changed. Now many people live in the city. They ride in cars or on buses or trains. Often, people have no garden at all. When they come home, they play computer games or sit in front of the television. They even have a remote so that they don't have to move to change the channel. Even small children are getting less and less exercise. But what's so bad about that? Plenty. God created us to move. Our bones and muscles must have exercise in order to stay strong. In fact, they start to weaken just a few hours of doing nothing. When the bones aren't used, they lose calcium. When muscles aren't used, they lose protein. Even the brain starts to lose its thinking power when we don't get enough exercise. How many of you are between the ages of six and 18? Raise your hand. Well, here's something you need to know. You are at the age when it's most important to store calcium in your bones. One way you can do this is by eating foods that contain lots of calcium. Some excellent calcium containing foods are in this picture. What do you see? I see broccoli, spinach, almonds, pomegranate, and tofu. But even if you eat food loaded with calcium, it won't do much good unless you exercise as well. Exercise gives bones and muscles the message that they are needed and helps them stay strong and sturdy. When you choose an exercise to do, it's a good idea to choose something you enjoy. Then you will be more likely to stick with it. What kinds of exercise do you like to do? Whatever you choose, make sure that it gives your heart and lungs a good workout. Your heart rate should increase and you should start breathing faster. This is often called aerobic exercise. We're going to do some aerobic exercise, but first you should check your pulse. Put your right hand under your left wrist. Your middle finger should be on the bone on the side 
of your wrist, just under your thumb. Now, slip your fingers into the little groove just next to this bone. Gently press with the pads of your fingers. Do you feel your pulse? It's like a gentle little tapping. Okay, when I say go, start counting your pulse. Keep counting until I say stop. All right, here we go. I'm gonna time you. Start counting. All right, you can stop. Now, I want you to take that number and double it. And remember that number. We'll time you again after we exercise. All right, now stand up. Question, do you know how to run in place? Your legs run, but you stay in the same place. All right, here we go. I want you to run in place for one minute. Are you ready? Ready, set, go. Ten seconds. Twenty seconds. Thirty seconds. Forty seconds. Fifty seconds. We're almost done. All right, you may stop. Now, I want you to count your pulse again, and I'm going to time you. When I say go, you can start counting. Ready? Go. All right, you can stop counting. Now take that number and double it. Is your heart beating faster? Are you breathing harder? If so, you are getting aerobic exercise. If not, you need to run faster. Exercises that strengthen your muscles are also very important. For example, push-ups, sit-ups, and weightlifting. Working hard in the garden can give you good aerobic exercise and strengthen your muscles. At the same time, you get fresh air and sunshine. Gardening is one of the best workouts around. A little exercise now and then is not enough to keep you strong and healthy. Instead, you should exercise nearly every day. Your body needs at least 30 minutes of exercise each time. Once you get into the habit, you will start to look forward to your exercise time. God gave us bodies that needed exercise because he loves us. 
he knew that exercise would help us to be happy and healthy. Even in heaven, God will give us things to do. The Bible says we will have gardens and vineyards where we can grow wonderful things to eat. Do you want to exercise in heaven? I know I do. But even here on earth, we will have happier, healthier lives when we remember to exercise. I've got three scriptures that I want to share with you. First one, she dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. Proverbs 31, 17. Here's the second one. A wise man is full of strength and a man of knowledge enhances his might. Proverbs 24, verse 5. And here's the third one. Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. 3 John chapter 1, verse 2. So let's get out there and move every day. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us exercise. I ask that you would help us to move every day and get plenty of exercise. And Father, help us have a wonderful Sabbath today. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, it's time for Pastor Mario's sermon now. But before he shares with us his message, we have a special music from Sister Ella and Brother Mateo. Happy Sabbath and God bless. Happy, Happy Sabbath, everyone. Today we're going to sing, Jesus bids us shine. Jesus bids us shine with a clear, pure light. Like a little candle burning in the night. In this world of darkness, we must shine. You in your small corner and I in mine. Jesus bids us shine, first of all for him. Jesus sees and knows it, if our light is dim. He looks down from heaven, sees us shine. You in your small corner and I in mine. Amen. Amen. Amen, everyone. This is your pastor, Pastor Mario. And I'm so glad that you can join me today in this beautiful Sabbath day to study God's Word. Today we will continue studying our series, If My People. The text that we are using is 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Before we go on the Bible, how about if we pray? Father God, thank you so much for helping us through the technology to be close to our brothers and sisters and friends. Thank you for allowing us to study your word. Bless us as we open your Bible. We want to hear your voice. Give us insight, give us knowledge, and give us the ability to put those things in practice in our lives. Forgive us our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The text that we are using is 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Let's go on the Bible. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Last Sabbath, we studied the first three words of this text, if my people. Today, we're going to study the phrase, who are called by my name. What an interesting quote uh, or phrase, I will say, who are called by my name. So let me start with a story. When I got married, I remember after the ceremony, something amazing happened. Milagros Rivera became Milagros Reategui, my wife. What an interesting thing that through our marriage, she was able to become part of me. 
She took my name. She took my last name. And I did not force her. She did it from her own free will. She decided to enter into a legal and a spiritual relationship with me. She linked her identity with my identity. And a name, as you can see, is so essential, is an essential element in the identity of the person. If you wouldn't have a name, how people want to call you? Hey, hey, excuse me, but a name makes you somebody. Sharing a name also is sharing life because two became one and we form a family, a unity. You see, what is, what is it that a name is so important? What is it that a name is, it, it, it is vital for people? In biblical times, if you remember, a name indicated what the person was and what he or she could become in the future. This is difficult, right? When you pick a name and you think about your new baby, you want to give a good name with a good meaning. A lot of people take a lot of time finding a name with a beautiful meaning. But sometimes you pick a name and not necessarily you you your child will become that person that you are hoping. You see, Jacob, for instance, his name was Jacob and mean deceiver. Abraham, father of multitudes. David, beloved. And you see, those, the, those people also make mistakes. But God was so good, and their names were a reflection of their character at the end. Jacob, his name was changed. For Israel. A name also carries tradition, character traits, and attributes or attributes that defines who you are. Let me give you some examples of other names. Anna, Anna full of grace, Mary, the chosen or loved by God. Michael, who is like God? What about Matthew, gift of God? Sarah means princess. Daniel means justice from God or justice of God. Benjamin means the preferred. William means the protector. Angel, many people like that name for their kids. And it's a beautiful name, means messenger of God. Isaiah. God is Savior, and so forth. We can have very numerous names, and all those names mean something. But when we read this text, I want to invite you to read it again. And he says, If my people, just that part, who are called by my name, who are called by my name, what that means when I start looking in different translations, I found two interesting different translations that it says, who bear my name. But I like the other one better, that he says, who belong to me. So in other words, those who are called by my name, say the Lord, belong to me, says the Lord. What a wonderful thing. We belong to the Lord. What a wonderful thing it is that we are part of something, of somebody who claims us as his own. Me and my wife always teach our kids that their behavior is a representation or represents their family. You see, when they do bad things, people look at us and say, well, probably you guys are doing a very bad job at home. But when they do good, they say, those kids are very well behaved. That means that they do their job. If we belong to God, the way we represent God, we should always do our best, don't you think? Because God, God is love. God loves us. Therefore, we need to be 
able to represent the character of God in a good way. But unfortunately, we don't do that. The way we think, the way we talk, the way we do things misrepresent the character of God many, many times. And we hinder the relationship that could be between somebody who is looking to come to God. This is horrible and terrible. Now, let me tell you something. In order to understand the importance of a name, God has many names. And you can see this in many examples in the Bible. I'm going to give you one. Look at your Bible, Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. I give you three seconds. Exodus 15, verse 26. You got it? Remember the story when God showed Moses how to turn bitter water into sweet water? Yes, he made a promise to Israel when he said, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians." For I am the Lord who heals you. Wow. God is the Lord who heals. For all those people over there that are suffering from this virus. Let me remind them. God is the God that heals. He has that power. In Hebrew, Yahweh, Rofeka. He heals you. God is the healer. David knew his Lord. And Psalms 23, verse 1, you know this text already. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall know one. He knew who was the Lord, his shepherd. He, he, he considered himself like a lamb and God the shepherd. This God is my shepherd means in Hebrew, Yahweh, Rohe. God is our shepherd. God is our Rohe. Another name for the Lord. When David knew this, he knew what he was saying. When Abraham hugged his son after he almost sacrificed him, he saw a ram stuck in the bushes. And he called that place Yahweh Yireh. Look in Genesis 22, 14. In Hebrew, Yahweh Yireh. And look at what he says, Genesis 22, 14. Just that part that he says, The Lord will provide. Most, um, uh, I'm sorry, Abraham went over there just because God called him to do that. But his faith was that the Lord will provide, and he did. He provided a ram for the sacrifice. He didn't have to sacrifice, after all, Isaac. You see, God is our provider. He is Yahweh, Yireh. Remember when Moses triumphed against the Amalekites? He built an altar, and he called his name in Exodus 17, 15. He called his name the Lord is my banner. You can look in your Bibles, Exodus 17, 15. The Lord is my banner. This in Hebrew means, it says, Yahweh Nisi. The Lord is my banner. What about the other story in Judges 6, 23 and 24? Look in your Bibles. Judges 6, 23 and 24. Are you there? This is what happened when Gideon realized that he was in the presence of God. Jesus came to him and said something. He said, Peace, do not be afraid. You are not going to die. So Gideon built an altar to the Lord there 
and call it the Lord is peace. This in Hebrew, Yahweh Shalom. Yahweh Shalom. So the Lord is our peace. The Lord loves us. The Lord is our healer. The Lord is our protector. In every name, the character of God is represented. If you belong to God, my brother and sister, my friend that you are watching this video, you should represent the character of God. We belong to Him. And if we belong to Him, our communion with Him should be a daily one. And the way we interact with people, are we showing peace? Are we showing patience? Are we showing the character of God? Are we studying the Word of God in the way we should? Are we testifying of His love and praying in His name? Now, let me tell you something, talking about praying in His name. Praying in His name is a wonderful privilege. We already have the privilege to be called Christians, although back in the days that was more like an insult. But if we are followers of Christ, therefore we are Christians. But a privilege is also be able to pray in the name of the Lord. Jesus said, if you look in John chapter 14, verse 12 and 14. Look at your Bibles. John 14, verse 12, 13, and 14. Are you there? I'm almost there. All right. Let me read it for you. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than this he will do. Because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. You see, if you ask God in his name, he will do it. But let me tell you something and remind you something very important. Maybe today you will say, Pastor, give me one second. That's not true. Because I've been praying and praying for something. No answer. Why is it that you say that everything that I pray in the name of the Lord, He will do it? Remember that pray in the name of Jesus and praying in the name of Jesus is to ask for the things that harmonize with what He is. In other words, do you hear what I say? You can pray for whatever, but if it doesn't harmonize with what He is, unfortunately, your prayer won't be answered. Because this is about His character. And it's that the things that you pray, they have to be in accordance with His will. He wants the best for you. But today, people are praying for houses and riches and stuff like that. Is it bad to pray for our health? Is it bad to pray for our houses? No, it's not too bad to pray for, for material things. But I think that our focus is incorrect. If we pray first to change God, our character, our temper, our mind, our hearts, the way we talk, the way we treat our families, the way we do things in the church. This is what God is ready and eager to hear. Search what? Search first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all the things will be added unto you. So if you look first, how can God transform your life? The material things God will supply. That's for sure. Let me invite you to read another text. Proverbs 18.10 Proverbs 18.10 is after the book of Psalms. You got it there? Alright, let me read it for you. The name of the Lord 
is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. In God we can find safety. He is our strong tower. In His name, great seas have been opened at the mere mention of His name. The flames of burning furnace were cooled down. The jaws, the jaws of the f hungry lions were closed. Entire cities were reduced to rubble and powerful armies fled. By the name of the Lord, demons become terrified. In the name of the Lord, violent storms were calm. When you pray in the name of the Lord, the blind can recover his sight. The muscles, the tendons, and the ligaments of the disabled limbs have been restored. Remember the stories that I mentioned to you in those miracles? Of course you do, because you read your Bible. And you know that every time we pray in the name of the Lord, the Lord will do miracles, miraculous things. Let me invite you to read another text. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. Philippians is in the New Testament, chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. I'll give you five seconds. Are you there? Two more? All right. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the same, I'm sorry, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth. Philippians 2, 9 and 10. I don't know if you experienced this before, if you have children, but when you hear the crying and the calling of your name from the voice of your children, I don't know, um, every kid and every parent are connected in such a way that you can, you can identify the crying of your kids. And when my kids cry and, and they are afraid or you can sense this anguish in their voice, is it not true that as good parent, the first thing you do is leave everything behind and you run and see what is happening to them? Let me tell you something. That's exactly what God does with you and me. When you come to Him and you pray in anguish, with fear, with without hope but you come to the Lord the Lord who is your healer the Lord which is peace the Lord that is our banner the Lord that is our shepherd the Lord that is our fortress he will come and help you he will grab you into his powerful hands and he will bless you you see he is the one who can give you peace in this time of trouble. A lot of people think that this is vacation time, but I tell you, don't think that way. This is the time where you need to come to the Lord and to spend time with Him, to know this wonderful God that is calling you, His people, that we belong to Him. This is the God who wants to be revealed to you. He wants to show His character to you. He wants to tell you, Do you need something? I'm your provider. Are you sick? I'm your healer. Do you, do you experience anxiety? I'm your peace. Are you afraid? Are you, are you feeling vulnerable? I'm your fortress. This is the kind of God that we have. That for every need that human beings have, He has the solutions. Let me tell you this story. A single mod mother was raising her baby girl, beautiful baby girl. 
she she was still an infant and she was so happy with her baby girl she was living only with her she didn't have parents she didn't have a husband to help her one day she ran out of milk and she had to go and buy milk for her daughter when she was sleeping she thought that it would be a good idea to run quickly to the store and buy milk for the baby she closed the door she let the baby sleeping and she went to the store as soon as she could and as fast as she could she ran and when she was approaching to the store she heard an explosion people started screaming and there was a smoke coming back where she believed where she lives and then at that moment something in her heart told her told her you should come back she ran back to her house and all the neighbors were there and the firefighters were coming and she knew, knew that her house was burning at that moment she was desperate and afraid for her daughter she pushed everybody away and she made through to the house she entered to the house in flames and she entered to the room where the baby was sleeping she grabbed her baby in her arms and she left the house and escaped the baby was safe but unfortunately the mother and the effort of coming inside of the house that it was burning she burned her hands and her arms many years pass and the baby girl became a young lady a beautiful young lady and every time she was gathering with her friends their friends were always making fun of her mother why you mom has the most horrible hands that I ever seen in my life and, the, and, and then she became embarrassed every time with her mother and she became angry one day and one day she went and talked to her mom and said mama I really need to talk to you and she said yes my daughter tell me I feel so embarrassed because your hands are so ugly so I don't really want you to be with me when I'm with my friends because it's very embarrassing your hands are ugly her mother was very sad with the words that she said. But she said, I would like to tell you why I have these hands. And she said, well, tell me then. When you were a baby girl, the house got in, on fire. I ran and tried to save you. And when I tried to save you, I burned my hands. But I saved you. And that's the reason why my hands are ugly. The girl started crying. And she hugged her mom and asked for forgiveness. And she said, Mother, you have the most beautiful hands that i ever seen in my life. You see, one day Jesus came to this world. And he was crucified in a horrible cross. His hands and feet were were pierced by horrible nails and today when he comes back he will show us the marks of those nails and his hands but those hands are so beautiful to us because because of those hands and those feet we are safe let me ask you a question when was the last time you ran to the fortress, to the healer, to the peace that only God can give you? Carry his name with pride, but don't make don't make mistake in understanding this word pride. I'm not telling you to feel above everybody else. I'm telling you, don't be ashamed. To be called Christian, Seventh-day Adventist Christian, whatever you go. Represent God. Represent Jesus to the world in everything you do and everything you say. 
make his name part of your life. You see, back in World War II, the Israelites and the concentration camps were forced to wear the, the start of David in their chest as a sign that they were Jewish. What kind of sign are you going to show to people today that you belong to God? What is it? Are you going to be hiding? Are you going to be embarrassed? This is the time to shine. And with prayer, with supplication, the windows of heaven will be open for you. He will protect you. He will bless you. This is the time where we need to be closer to God. This is the time that we need to ask for protection, for a better relationship between you and God. I hope you are not taking this time as a vacation time, but rather as a time where you need to be acquainted with all the names, with all the powerful things that God can do for you. Be, be His friend. Be part of His people because you belong to Him. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Today, the lesson is that you never forget that a God that is mighty and powerful, He is claiming to you because you belong to Him. Let me pray for you. Father God, Thank you so much because we are your people, that we belong to you and you belong to us. Thank you for providing the wonderful things that you provide for us. So I ask you, Lord, that this time that we are living, make us closer to you, that we can become acquainted with your character, that we can say that my name and your name are one Christian. Bless my brothers and sisters. Bless our friends that are watching this video. And thank you so much for all your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have a wonderful Sabbath. Take care.